this is about the time when I apologize for, you know, not posting because I've been super busy with work and whatnot. But the, the, the truth is, I, Zelda came out. So I've been I've been playing just a little bit of Zelda. Even managed to get hold of the collector's edition for those of you that care. No one? Okay. Well, let's get into the video then. What's going on, guys? If you've been living under a rock, or if you've been, I don't know, mummified for the last couple of thousand years, you might be fortunate enough not to have heard of Netflix's latest documentary. It, is this a documentary? I mean, the director says it's a documentary. You know, the, the, the description of the trailers on YouTube claim that it's a documentary. On Netflix, it's under historical documentaries. So I will assume that it is as such and is based on nothing but historical fact, right? What? Now, I don't know what's got everyone so worked up about, about a documentary. I mean, how bad can it be? I mean, since when did the internet care about historical documentaries? We're just here to talk about like Star Wars poo poo, you know, Lord of the Rings bad now, Marvel. Pfft, pfft. Like, you know, I mean, how bad can it be? And I remember clear as day her saying to me, Sholly, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. Oh. Oh, oh, I see. I mean, how bad can it be? I mean, come on. I mean, you know, it's not like it's that bad. The creators of this documentary are being sued on behalf of an entire country or anything. <laughs> Well, that is, that, that's unfortunate. You know, it's often said in the world of filmmaking that if you're making a documentary about the history of a particular country and you're then sued on behalf of said country because of said documentary, that's not, that's not a great sign. That, that's not good. Let me play devil's advocate though. Maybe, you know, these are probably just a nice bunch of people looking to just make a nice little documentary and they just got a little bit lost. Oh dear God, it's Will Smith's husband. People are, people are without hair. You see him all the time, Will Smith's husband. He lost it. For those of you that don't know, Jada Pinkett Smith is about as dislikable as, well, Jada Pinkett Smith. She's really become the who's who of, why? Okay, so the entire country of Egypt hates this show uh, and it's been produced and narrated by Jada Pinkett Smith but we can look past that let's let's look past that and let's let's take a look at what the rest of the world has to say about this that's that's what the people that's what really matters one percent <laughs> how the hell do you get one percent Mein Kampf got an 81% approval rating on Google, which is concerningly high, by the way. But still, there are sex criminals with more public appeal than this show. I don't think I've ever seen a score that low before. What, what happens in this documentary? Is it, What is it, just an hour of Jada Pinkett Smith skullfucking the remains of Cleopatra whilst whistling the latest Ed Sheeran tune? What did you do? Well, never mind that, because those were the scores when the show initially aired. Of course, people have come to the aid of this documentary. And actually, in the last couple of days, their approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes has actually doubled. We've seen a 100% increase from 1% to 2%. That's a big win for the showmakers. So for those of you that don't know, the main accusation being leveled at this show is that it's attempt attempting to tamper with, alter, and ultimately erase uh, Egyptian history. Uh, obviously, although Cleopatra in the past has been portrayed by a white woman, this documentary is claiming or at least entertaining the idea that Cleopatra and ultimately a lot of those around her were black, which is contrary to significant historical evidence, which heavily suggests that she's what is it, Macedonian Greek, I believe is the prevailing theory of Cleopatra's heritage. You know, the truth is, I really didn't know what I'd signed up for. I thought, you know, I'd just... It's going to be a documentary. It's going to be, what, like an hour, an hour and a half long? I've seen Blue Planet. I can't remember how long it is. But, but I mean, you know, it's about an hour, an hour and a half. This is three hours long. It... Why? Why? Why is everything three hours? I'm sorry. The internet's ruined my attention span. Three hours. Is just... Oh, do we have to? We're not making it through the whole of this, are we? Talking of Zelda, which, <laughs> which was about five minutes ago, if you're looking for... <laughs> 
that's a great segue. If you're looking for props uh, from your favorite movies and video games, go check out the top link in my description, Raven Forge. Those guys help me out on this channel. If you go check them out, you'll be helping me out as well. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. Let's get watching, shall we? There was a time long ago. Boo, this sucks, boo. So, too soon, too, sorry, sorry. Just get a bit ahead of myself. And there is none among them more iconic than Cleopatra. Okay, so it kicks off with an empowering introduction from uh, Jada. And, uh, you know, we're introduced to the focus of this documentary, which is, of course, Cleopatra. But it turns out I didn't know as much about her as I, as I thought I did. But few know the real woman, her truth. I am Isis. Well, that's an unexpected plot twist. And for those um, actuallys in the comments, I'm well aware that Isis is the Egyptian god of fertility. It, it was just a funny haha. Do you know how hard it is to take something with a 2% score and make it entertaining? I'm trying here, man. I get a very unusual vibe from this show. It, like, at times it feels like a Cleopatra TikTok fan cam video. Let it begin. At times it feels like they're going for like a Game of Thrones type dramatization that really does clash with the the like the factual testimonials from the scholars who occasionally uh, you know j pop up and begin monologuing which is the only reminder we have that this is indeed supposed to be uh, a documentary side note this one has the same silhouette as my penis now i am no great scholar of egypt and i don't claim to be any kind of authority but one of the scholars in particular professor what's her name professor shelley p haley she seems to present a lot of what I would call hearsay statements as matter of fact. Now, these are quite minor remarks, but they're presented in such a way that suggests that it's like she knew Cleopatra personally, almost, which just seems like a, a very odd way for a scholar to conduct such a conversation. Those things matter to her just as much, if not more, than politics. Often scholars don't realize how important these two women were to Cleopatra. She wants to be remembered as Egyptian. Cleopatra feels very close to the Egyptian people. Unfortunately though, Professor Shelley isn't the only scholar that makes unusual remarks during this documentary. The appeal of Cleopatra is that we imagine her, that everyone can imagine her in their own way. I imagine her to have curly hair like me and a similar skin color. Why? The appeal of Cleopatra is that you can imagine her however you like. First of all, no. No, you can't. Second, that's not how history works. That, my friend, is fan fiction. I personally like to think that Attila the Hun was a gentle guy who liked the smell of daffodils and long walks on the beach. Is that how history works now? Is, is that what it is? Is, is that the appeal of Till Attila the Hun? No! Like I mentioned, I get a really weird vibe from this show. I don't feel as though I'm being, I'm being informed. I, it's like, I mean, it's not quite fan fiction, but like there's a whiff of ass kissing and, and, and idealization. I should have come sooner. You're here now. Open the royal grain stores. Let's get these people fed. And we should build a temple, a place for hope. They'll remember this. It seems like the creators are trying to paint a very specific of Cleopatra and exactly who she is and what kind of attitude she has through these dramatizations. And you know, they, they embellish her demeanor with like little throwaway statements and that's intercut with scenes like this. Number one victory royale, yeah, Fortnite we about to get down. Get down. Ten kills on the board right now, just wiped out to me. Obviously I changed the music in that clip for the memes, but like I feel like I, I, I should tell you that because you would rightly assume that this show is so bad that they would actually choose a, a song like that, but it's just for the memes, people. Just for the memes. Also, I've heard a few people bring up the fact that none of the scholars in this show... Scholars. None of the scholars in this show are actually Egyptian. Which, to be honest, I think is a bit of a dumbass point because... I mean, other than maybe bringing one on to talk about, like, its impact on modern Egyptian culture, maybe, because it would be a bit more poignant coming from someone who's Egyptian. But the fact is, we're talking about ancient Egypt here. Like, you know, we are many generations removed from those people. So I don't think, you know... I don't think it matters where in the world you're from when we're talking about thousands of years ago. But having said that, if like this show's creators, you want to put your own spin, your own little, your, your own little touch 
on uh, Egyptian culture. Yeah, of course you're not going to include an actual Egyptian because they're going to be sat there like, Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. So there's a civil war going on in Rome. Once again, it's about power. Uh, it's two men. All right, calm down with you, Shelley. I mean, I'm sorry. We can't all be Cleopatra, can we? Now, I'll have to ask you guys about this one because, uh, you know, like I say, I I'm not a great scholar of Egypt, but I feel like, you know, I, I learned a little bit. But uh, I feel like we're getting the Gladiol treatment all over again. I mean, Cleopatra, don't get me wrong, was noted to be an incredibly intelligent, uh, you know, very strategic, diplomatic person. Indeed. And she actually physically led the Navy in the Battle of Actium. Sure. But I don't think she was an actual physical fighter. I don't think she was ever... I don't think it was ever documented that she physically fought. So when we get scenes like this, I don't know if it's entirely accurate or if it's just a bit of girl power porn, but... You know, you guys will have to let me know on that one. Anyway, we then move on to a famous tale that some of you, uh, most of you, probably have heard when it comes to Cleopatra. And this is the idea that, you know, she had to smuggle her way into the Palace of Alexandria. And it's, it, it's been said that she did so be, while, you know, being wrapped up in a carpet. But of course, Shelley isn't too happy with the source of this information. The source for the story is a Greek historian, Plutarch who lived 150 years after Cleopatra died. He doesn't know. Shelly, I hate to break it to you, but going off that logic, no one knows anything about history. Why would someone who was around 150 years after Cleopatra died not know anything about Cleopatra? You said yourself that your grandmother told you that Cleopatra was black, and she was born not 150 years, but millennia after the death of Cleopatra. She doesn't know anything either then, does she? Going off your logic, who, by the way, is your grandmother? Do we know her? She, she could be a waitress at Five Guys for all we know. And, you know, I've heard the stories. I feel like I'm somewhat aware of the relationship that was said to have been had between Cleopatra and Caesar. But this episode just evolves into, like, fan fiction, basically. I, you know, and the dialogue. Whew, the dialogue is just simply stunning. Get the Oscar ready, boys. We've found a winner already. Now, I have just got to the end of the first episode and I can confidently tell each and every one of you that I am not going to be watching anymore. I just, there is no way I'm sitting here and watching three hours of that. There's no shot. I do want to be reasonable though. And I will say that I was pleasantly surprised by the production quality. Like I didn't expect it to be that good. Cause obviously this is a documentary. And you know, I'm used to watching plucky British documentaries that are incredibly informative, but are usually made on a budget of like, what, like 20 quid and half a Twix. So I will give them props for that, but th that's about all the praise I've got, I'm afraid. That that's about it. How do you feel about Jada and a new little documentary about good old Cleopatra? You'll have to let me know down below. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Hoping to get a couple more videos to you within the next week or so. So uh, hopefully you can join me for that. Take care of yourselves, guys. And of course, a huge shout out to each and every one of the channel members and the patrons. Uh, starting with the top tier, the big balls. Okay, they don't they don't all have balls, but if they did. It'd be ginormous. Sorry. The top tier. Positive one. Infinite Dum Dum. David, Flunky, Michael, Jax, Koss, Texas Lawman, and ATS. Uh, yeah, I can't thank you guys uh, enough for supporting me to the extent that you do. It's crazy. It really is an honor and it genuinely, it really helps me out. So, yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Tier two. Jan Witch, Dr. Malski, Hadziu, Saeed, Mark Maiden, Sensei Fang, Cannot Dog Ramachi, Mendicant Bias, Michael Terpia, Michael S, Dagger D69. Nice. St. Nemo, Warwick, and we're welcoming uh, our Polish friends. Uh, Madga and Jarek to the tier two. Thank you so much for joining the Patreon, guys. Uh, I seem to get a lot of love from Poland. So uh, yeah, you, you guys seem real sweet over there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and of course, a big thank you to the tier ones as well. And if you want to become a channel member or a Patreon, you can do so down below with the links in the description. Yeah, thanks to each and every one of you guys. Really appreciate it. And there we go. Another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You better do. Yeah. Yeah. But till the next one. See you then. Take care of yourself, guys, and I'll see you. I'll see you very soon.